we had some uncomfortable conversations last week. Conversations part one. Uncomfortable conversations part one. Then we played Newcastle. It's only right that we need to have uncomfortable conversations part two. Some say part three, four, five, and six, but no. Part one, part two. Now, here we go, people. It is Talking Points. Hello, I'm Sam Spurs for Life, and this is Paxton Road TV Talking Points, episode number 124. This time, I think I've got all the details right. 124 Uncomfortable Conversations, part two. To join me to discuss further things in the house, we have my man. It is the one and only Tottenham Tifosi, 61. Sean, how are you doing? Fine, 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 fine. The further we get away from the weekend, the better I feel. Yes. Um, like I said, as, as time goes, they say time heals all. Um, and the there was a little, there was a little, there was a little joy that was floating <laughs> yeah. last night around I, about 10 o'clock. I think we might need to just touch on that quickly. Well done, Bayern Munich. Um I must say, Harry Kane didn't do too much to help them get through. But like I said, he's part of the team. He's part of the team. But, like, but hold on a second. Hold on a second. Man of the match, Eric <laughs> Dyer. What now? Say? <laughs> what? Now that was peak Eric Dyer when he was playing for us and he was doing well. And there, people forget that he did do well for us. I, I no, he in his early days, like I said, I remember the game against West Ham. His his, his debut game scored the goal. He played it right back, um, and I thought you've got a player on hands. And like he said, he he has performed. Let's not. We have to. I I have to kind of try and remember those, and he's you have to have some sort of fondness for him. He was a decent player for us, but I think as with all players, most players, you've time got, comes to an Sam, end. Sam, you've got to have seen his post match interview. I ain't seen it. I ain't seen it. No. Oh man! <laughs> what did he say? Paul Gilmore me. said. He says. He says uh, Harry got asked a lot of uh, things about the pre-match, you know, about the, the the significance of the opponent and things like that. And yes. he said, uh, "Was there any special um, incidents?" And he just goes, "It was nice. That was <laughs> nice. yeah. It was nice. It was nice. It was not. Yeah, it was nice to beat them." <laughs> It was very nice. It's very funny nice. coin with Eric Dyer. Funny coin. <laughs> well, before we get into this any further, let's add the uh, one of the other pieces to the jigsaw. It is Sid Spurs. Welcome to the stream. Well, headphones, I notice. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear what's me? Going on? What, what are you going on? What's headphones? What's going on? You don't usually have headphones on. And they Bluetooth as well. I know. I just, well, I, of course they are. Oh my God! You have to remember. What can I say, it? folks? These are the <laughs> jokes, folks. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's what you've got to do when Sid comes on. Da, 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 da. Huh? I've I've got the headphones on because I'm just doing what all the Arsenal fans are doing on just trying to not listen to any Tottenham fans in it. So I thought I'll just join them. You know what I mean? Because they don't want to hear us. They've all got headphones on. We're Bluetooth. Remember, there is a slight lag. It's not much. Just a slight one, but yeah, it's all good. Um, whew, we just touching on Sid before we got started on uncomfortable conversations part two. Uh, well done, Eric Dyer. Well done, Harry Kane. Well done, Kimmich. Well done, Thomas Tuchel. <laughs> well done, the whole of bloody Bayern Munich. <laughs> it made my night because I could see it going. Oh, if that, oh no. Anyway, it didn't happen. That's all hypothetical. What did you think of yesterday's game and um, does it really have any reflection on us? I know now it's probably looking at highly unlikely that Fifi's is going to be a Champions League spot, but so what? I thought there was only one Champions League game on yesterday because there was only one game I was watching. Real Madrid versus Manchester City. Was there another game being played yesterday? 
I don't know. I'm not interested. Doesn't bother me. I don't care. But if there was, I think <laughs> who was Arsenal playing? Someone's, oh, okay. If I, I, I playing in my back garden, I draw the curtains, mate. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I I understand, and I've heard that a certain Eric Dyer who left Tottenham has played more semi-finals or just as many semi-finals as Arsenal Football Club. That's um, that's laughable. <laughs> that's laughable. There's there's you a know? lot of laughter we can do, but ultimately, yeah. you know, what I mean, we got to take care of our own business. We got to do our own stuff. It's good that they them lot down the road haven't got the opportunity to do what we did five years ago and possibly get into a Champions League final because we never know what can happen when you do that. But I think they would have lost the next round anyway. But anyway, that's beside the point. Um, Tottenham Hotspur. Um, we had a... You two weren't on it, but me and Darius did a Uncomfortable Conversations part one last week. This is before, prior to, <coughs> obviously, the Newcastle game. We kind of touched on certain players in terms of form, where they, where we think we should be as a club. Are we going to be able to play this way? Do players need to be dropped? Do certain players need to be given an opportunity? Blah, blah, blah. We didn't really touch on transfers. I guess the playing style itself kind of was looking towards the Champions League now. Again, we're in fifth place at the moment and fifth place might not be enough because I was almost banking that fifth place would be. But again, I'm not saying I want Champions League for that fact that I don't think we're ready for that. But being in there means you've got a chance. So ultimately, if you're there, it's going to be beneficial to the club one way or the other, but possibly detrimental in others. But the manager as well, our long-term success. These are all the kind of things that, based on what we've seen up to this point now, there's going to be different opinions. I've got various opinions. Again, I'm going to state this as as as, as read. I, I'm positive and fully behind Ange Postecoglou. It doesn't mean to say that there's things in there that I don't that, that give me a little bit of uh, unease at the present time. And some of the things that he said gives me a little bit of unease. But um, I think time's required, and I think definitely the summer window is definitely something that's going to be required. So I'm going to come to you two because you guys didn't really get an opportunity to discuss about the uncomfortable conversations part one. Now, players, and this is post the Newcastle game. I'll start with you, Sid. Who's in that team is on some shaky ground? Because I think there's a few players on a bit of shaky ground here. And when I mean shaky ground in terms of starting, you know, I've seen yesterday in the Arsenal game, Saka starts every single week. He hasn't been playing that great, but I think they have no choice but to play him. And... I can see the, the, the downside of that. Who in our team at this moment in time, starting wise, has got a bit of has got some things that need to be talked about. Start with you, Steve. Um, I is there a Blues Brothers theme today? Then, <laughs> um, no man, no man. We're musicians. Oh, is that what it is? I'm I, I'm playing the violin today, the smallest one in the world, just for the Arsenal fans. Um, there's a lot of players, I think. I think there's a lot of players whose positions, I think, um, defensively wise, I wouldn't say there's anyone that needs to panic. However, we need reinforcements. And I'm talking right back, left back, or right wing back, left wing back. I'm also thinking we still need another centre back replacement. All right, so I'm going to stop you there. Before we get, because that's that's more the transfer, and we'll get into the transfers, but like at this okay. moment in time, let's Jeopardy. just say, we, I, we've only got a certain amount of players until the end of this season. Now, yep. I think I think, I think Sid Sam wants you to grab people up. He wants names. <laughs> he wants to he wants, he wants, he wants names. I All want right, names. Let's... I want okay. names, Sid. I want names. I'll give you names. I'll give you names. I. This is who I think, yeah. Are we saying needs to go or is in just in jeopardy? Not needs to go, but like... Uh, what, okay. I was, I, was, I was talking last week with Darius. Basuma was a prime example. Yep, he seems Basuma. to be in the starting line. I know he's played better with Saar, but in the last couple of... Not more than the last couple of games, I don't think he's... He's he's had good moments. And what I'm expecting from him is more than just good moments. I want I want some real continuity of performances. But I'm, consistent. I'm not seeing that. Yeah. Okay, then. So I'm, I'm saying Basuma. Definitely. Werner, even though he's only on loan, but I think he's another one. I think Solomon is definitely one. 
But who would you bring in to start then? In terms, because that, that's that's more getting rid of them players. But now there's seven, six, seven games to go. Yeah. I don't think Ben Spurs should start the next game. I don't think no. Werner should start the next game if Richardson's no. fit. I bring Richardson and I'll move that song. There's even so much. <sighs> I'm going to say this as well. I even think at this moment in time we have to consider the back two, and I'm not saying about you know complete change it but is there a it, we seem to be conceding too many opportunities at goal i know it's not the back two in in their defense it's not just the defense that's the reason but we're giving too many shots and we're now conceding a lot of goals so something has to be done somewhere on that pitch whether it's a different formation but as i said i think even romero might be even looked at in terms of a starting 11 position but that might be a little bit far far fetched because I don't think we could replace him at this moment in time anyway with Dragonson in that position. I don't think so. No, but do you know what? Before Sean, if you want to come in, I, I disagree on that one. Look at Man City. They've got Stones, they've got Ake, they've got Akanji, they've got Diaz. He he mixes them around. And do you hear any one of them complaining? No. Okay, they, they can all play wherever Pep tells them to play. So at the end of the day, there's not one player in our team that is guaranteed cemented a starting lineup. If if they went to Man City, I'd say any of them players, do you think they'd be expecting to be starting week in, week out? No. Pep would have changed that pairing by now, but five times. Yeah, he would have changed it. And he's known for doing it constantly. So if you bought a centre back in, drag us in, and you bought him in for a reason, and you paid good money for him, why not? Play him. And if Romero is the one that has to be dropped, then so be it. I I was what I was listening to <laughs> troops yesterday, Mr. Guna. And he he, I mean, they're all saying the same thing, you know, Saka, Saka, Saka. But he turned around and said, I'm sorry, but Saka is not up to scratch. He disappears in big games. He needs to be dropped. So nobody's guaranteed or cemented a place to stop. Simple as. And I, I would try Dragusin before the end of the season. Why not? Can't do any worse than what these lot are doing. Every game they're conceding a goal. So, why not try it? It's not going to do any worse than what we've got at the moment. So, with those two, would you would you say that it would be Romero or Van de Ven that you would change if it was you? I'd was. change Romero because we've seen Dragusin can't play left centre-back because he that game that he <coughs> played as a left centre-back. All right, it was rusty. It was his first game. But... If you're naturally right-footed, then play the right-footed. And it might actually pass the ball to people instead of slowing the game down and stopping play and doing whatever. It'd have to be Romero for me. Sure. Romero is one of the, the, the three as the... What, what are they called? Did they call them? Three amigos. <laughs> <laughs> leadership group. The leadership group. I'm not listening to Sid because he's taking the rap piss today. <laughs> The three amigos. It must be them Bluetooth headphones that he's got on. Um, the leadership group. As Romero's part of the leadership group, Son's part of the leadership group, Madison's part of the leadership group, it almost appears to me that these three players are not so much untouchable, but certainly they're almost guaranteed to start if they're fit. Do you have the same sort of thoughts as, as, as Sid? Or what, what's your actual take on the players? Again, same similar sort of question, but based on the Romero thing, do you agree with that? And then give me your names. <laughs> your names too, if you have any. Um, you do realise that the next game is against Arsenal. I know. And, you, and you're wanting to drag in Dragusin. Oh, I, 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 that was him. That was that was him. That was him. No. I asked the questions. Why I not? think. I think like, the reason why is because at the moment. The quality, the drop off in our squad is too high. We 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 we, have, we don't have quality replacement for replacement. Now the difference, the Man City one is a is a good example. Now, Man Man City could you could say were well, found out last night by Real Madrid. They didn't change. They didn't, where was where was Pep's plan B, which is which we keep getting we keep getting aimed at that end. Where was Pep's plan B? He just carried on playing as Pep played, and he, he didn't win. He, he, he you know he, he made two great errors. He took off two of his penalty takers. 
And Sean, oh, Sean, sorry to disrupt, but did you know what the frightening thing about that? Apparently, both of them asked to be taken off. Both Harlan and De Bruyne asked to be taken off. What? What does that? What does that? What does that say? Who knows? I mean, you know, it, we're at this end, at the, the business end of the of, of the season. We get some very, very tired players. Saka looks dumb. He's been overplayed. He's played it week in and week out, and he's just been overplayed. We've got a very young squad too. I mean, you know, we our our our, our group has come down. It's uh, you know, we we want we. we we might want to change things for the next game, but the next game is such a big game. Now, what did what was what was Romero's problem at, at Newcastle? I think he was too interested, and he gets distracted by the Argentina Brazil thing, and he, he was chasing after Gamerish. Gamerish plays in midfield. You're a defender. You you need to look after the attackers. He was able for some of those goals, and I think. You know, do you not think that he's going to get a flea in his ear from Ange? Don't, don't, don't mistake Ange's passivity on the sidelines to when he gets back in the dressing room or when he gets back to Hotspur Way. Those players are getting absolutely roasted after last weekend. So don't worry. Don't worry about it. But I'm not suggesting wholesale changes for the next game. We were doing okay. Um, I think we're doing all right. We're doing all right. I think um, we're, we're tending to overreact. This is a, this is a development thing. We're only in the first eight months of a change of a rebuild. If you want to rebuild, let it be rebuilt. So Sean made a point. <coughs> if you if you finish, and, I, and I, I, like I said, this is all opinions, and, and I. As I said, I'm somewhere in between both of you with regards to the Romero thing. Um, I, I believe that Romero is one of our better defenders. He has moments that kind of lacks a concentration. But again, I think it's more than just the defensive two. The way we play, I keep saying, going back to the point, the fullbacks are not playing in fullback areas. They're, they're midfielders who have to go back to defend. That's how I look at them. Maybe their their actual profile isn't that so they're not directly midfielders they are fullbacks as such but the way that Ange plays you have to say that these players because of the majority of possession that we have we've seen it stats show 65 70 percent of possession most weeks it means that we're in ascendancy we have control of the ball and if we're playing position of football which is what we do the two fullbacks will be playing in midfield more, more often than not hence the reason why we get caught in transition so much because that's their, their height of pitch and they can be further up so the profile of that player needs to be such that they can do pretty much two roles. And you need really intelligent footballers to be able to do that. Part of those players that can play centre-back really well and then play left-back as well, right-back as well, and then you can even drop in. So you can do that with players, but they have to be really, really talented and really, really able to take on information. Now, we've seen that that can be done. As I said, I'll give you an example of John Stone's kind of playing as a as a centre back, but he's good on the ball, can play in midfield. I guess you could uh, angle the same thing back in the day for Rio Ferdinand. Even if you're looking at some of our players, Jan Vertonghen, um, Alderweireld, when we had uh, Ledley, he was like good on. You know, there's there's players that can probably be adaptable, but they have obviously got their stronger position. Now going back before I start rambling on too much, Sean's right. The drop off's too much. If we drop Romero, and let's say we were trying to bring him in for the next game, which is Arsenal. <laughs> That might not be the time to do it. Possibly we should have made that decision earlier in some of the earlier games, but then we could have looked at some of the games that we played earlier. Maybe Ange doesn't think that the player can just come in at this stage without more training, without more coaching. So I think you're right in that, Sean. I don't think we can properly do that for the next game. However, where I do agree with this, Sid, is as much as there shouldn't be any players that just because they shouldn't be able to drop. Son's been awful. But Son's got numbers, so I can give him a little bit more credence and credit for that. But again, I'm going to go back to the Basuma thing. A lot of the reason why our defence looks like it does is because we don't have enough protection for him. I watched again the highlights with Basuma at times. He's good on the ball, but there's, there isn't enough desire. There isn't enough real 
urgency. It's like he's playing at his pace. He's he's very he's got that language sort of style, very much like how Endon Bele likes to like to play, because he's basing it around his ability. But you have to work hard in football. You have to protect your back four. You have to. And I don't think we've got enough players that are ragging players about saying, oh, what are you doing? Come here, get back here. There's not enough of that. But I'd be dropping Basuma next game if it was me. Even for the Arsenal game, I would be. And I'd be bringing in. You know who I'd bring in? I'd bring Hoybier in. That's just me. Again, on that left-hand side, I dropped Werner. I put Son on the left. The reason I put Son on the left is because he doesn't have to then be up against two centre-backs. He doesn't have to have his back to goal. You know, he's not a back-to-goal player. He's not a flick-on player. Not to say we're going to have to play that way against Arsenal, but against Saliba and Gabriel, Son's got no chance. Harry Kane got locked up last night by two good players, but Son's got no chance in the centre. I think Richarlison's got more of a chance, but even Richarlison will find it hard against him. But hopefully with the other dynamics going on, let's say Johnson on the right and Son on the left, it creates a bit more for Richarlison. So that's my thoughts on it. But I agree with both of you on certain elements of it. There shouldn't be anybody that should be undroppable. What do you think the manager sees? And what do you think the manager thinks, Sean, about all of this? Do you think he's got certain players that he says, I'm playing them regardless? Or are there, is he going to be able to make the, these big decisions and drop certain players for certain games? And what's going to happen in that Arsenal game? I I, I think it, I, mean, I, I think he does have the players that he, he wants, but it, he, he was... I mean, if you saw his post-match interview, he was not happy with anything, with anything about that. So don't, you know, let's have it straight. He's, he's, he, he knows that he was let down by the players. And he had, you know, he has, he has his own culpability for that as well. You know, his substitutions were far too late. Again, when he'd been proactive against Forest, and remember, I didn't see the Forest game, he wasn't proactive against uh, Newcastle. You know, it was, and it turns out that Poro was injured in the first half. And they made him play on. So, you know, what what can you say when um when you know they're making a player who's clearly injured to play on when you've got a very dynamic front bearing of um, Isaac and uh and Gordon? I think that was you know that that's a mistake. It turns out to be a mistake. And Poro was replaced early in the second half, you know, and you know, then the drop, you know, they, and they want an example of the drop off. You go from Poro, who's been pretty good most of the season, down to Emerson Royale. You know that's that's a, that's a significant drop off. You know, um, so I'm 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 not I'm sure he's got his own players. For me, a player who's, who should be under threat and is uh, is Madison. And I think I there's a I think there's a a case for a badly treated Argentinian getting into the into that into that number ten, because I think whenever he started games for us, he <coughs> he's 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 contributed. He's got a bit of dig about him. He can get stuck in, um, and you know we were just so passive on on the uh, weekend, and I, I I don't want to see it again. You know, but I'm not I'm not. You know, I'm not panicking. I'm not panicking because our development is so early. It's so early. We've, we've, you know, and we've had some good football this year. I've got some. I've got some closing points I've written down because I want to want to use them at the end. But yeah, there's yeah. I, I'm, you know, I, I'm not sure about Werner. Um, but then someone has thrown up a stats. A stats list, and you know how I hate stats, but <laughs> you know, bearing in mind that the club is going towards this kind of stats revolution, it may it may be enough to convince them to keep him as part of the squad. What was you talk to me about them stats because I would like to hear if you if you know him because off the top of my head, he, he's he's uh, he's actually number one in tackles, believe it or not, as, as an offensive player. He's, he's, he's creating her up in the upper percentages as well. Tackling himself. You know, you know, it, no, that's comparing across across the Premier League since. I know. <laughs> you know. Since you, the new headphones, Sid, what's going on, man? Oh, um. So it, it just, you know, there's, there's, you know, he, 
I, I still can't get over the misses from like the weekend. And that was that was when I was like, you've got to score them, you know. And an informed striker would be heading that ball when we talked to you know, we talked about it in the when I jumped in on the uh, reaction show there on Monday night, you know. Uh, or whenever it was, I can't remember. I was still, I was still halfway over the Atlantic, yeah. You know, so it's let's you know let's let's not get caught up in the in the Twitter tosh that's going on. Social media is a is a bloody nightmare, I tell you, because everyone, if everyone's got an opinion, but if everyone's got an arsehole, they just some people talk through it rather than uh, through their through their, 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 their brain and the mouth. <coughs> How do you feel about Madison, Sid? Do you know what? I, I, I've I said this, and I, don't, I think I've said it to you boys, and I've said it to many people. Since that injury, Madison's not been the same. And again, it's this argument, people argument, like you just said, Sean, about the social media, the assholes, or everybody else on there. They're watching five minutes or ten minutes or match of the day or bits and bits. They don't see the full picture. Yourself, myself, Sam, we go to the games. I've been to every home game and I see exactly what he's doing. I don't think since he's come back from injury, I think he's not contributing at all. There's too much whining going on from him. He gets into, like, against Newcastle, he should have been sent off. I'm sorry. That is a red card. He should have been off. Yeah. He's one of my players, but you can't do what you've done. And he got away with it. And he does that quite a lot. And he's just disappearing in games. He's supposed to be the vo the vocal point of our midfield. He's supposed to be the creator. Yeah. He's supposed to be one of the leaders, captains of the team. He's not doing anything for me. He's just disappearing. He's he might as well not play. And I totally agree with you, Sean. I am not GLC, TLC, whatever you want, BBC, L, what, D, whatever you want to call LBC, whatever you want to call him. I am not his fan. But from what I have seen of him, he gives more in that 10, 15 minutes than Madison does in the whole game. And he can, he's that kind of a player that can take the game by the scruff of the neck. So if anything, I would start with GLC because I tell you why, against Arsenal, they'll have a plan. And I can see Madison getting vexed, getting heated up. I can even see him getting sent off because this is, we need players that are going to show passion and that and GLC, I think, could be that trick up the sleeve that Postacoglu's got that could win us this game on a week on Sunday or wherever it is. So I would. I don't know what's going on with Madison at this precise moment, whether it's that injury, whether it's still niggly, whether it's lack of confidence, whether it's the whole team having Bissouma next to him. I don't know what's going on. But Postacoglu, I think he's got his favourites. He needs now... Because don't forget, people are now going to start judging him. There's already people are already saying to him, you know what, blah, blah, blah. There's a couple of things you mentioned, one of them, Sean. His substitutions, he's not making them at the right time. He's hanging on too long. Whereas certain other managers straight away are making that sub. I don't know what's going on with him. But I think for the Arsenal game, I'm not saying make drastic changes, but something needs to change. Because remember, we're at home. And if things don't go that good if the fans are not behind us like the forest game where we were outsung the whole game by nottingham forest this is arsenal yes they've just been knocked out of the champions league or whatever if we're not going to be up for that against our arch bitter rivals then i tell you what it's not going to be good being at tottenham Hotspur stadium against them a week on sunday so there's a few players i think that needs to be changed i agree with you sam I'd give Hoiberg a start in midfield instead of Basuma because if he makes them mistakes that he's been making almost every week, Arsenal will punish us. So I'm going to come back to a couple of points. I'm going to come back to Tricky One's point here. Obviously, we were talking about the Madison thing. Can't get, keep getting away with recent form. I like to see Kulu in a number 10 role. I think it could be his best long term position. I tend to agree with that for Kulu, but whether or not he'd be as good as someone like Madison. Only time would tell. I'm not quite so sure. But just going back onto that Madison point as as to the reasons why we don't think he's hit the heights as he did in the earlier parts of the season. There's a few things for me. There's a number of views you've already kind of touched on the form of the team, um, you know, how we were playing in that early point. You know, then first 10 games, as I said, and I'm going to use the phrase, 
we hadn't been worked out then, you know. But one of the things that I've seen a lot of people or a lot of teams now tend to do with Madison since his return is be aggressive around him, get to him quickly, make him uncomfortable. And the type of player that he is, he's almost like a, a Jack the Lad. You can see that sort of a bit. He, he's not He's not going to take it lightly. He's going to be, he's, he's a bit aggro. That's the word I like. He's a bit aggro. And I like that in a player. But what happens when you get that little bit of aggro in a team that's not actually performing as it needs to every single time is that players understand that they can wind him up. You're right, Sid. He could have been sent off for that punch. There's an, I've, I've a couple of occasions where I've seen him kind of square up to people. There's a times I've seen him trying to take almost like, well, he needs a yell. He's, he's moaning a lot. You're right. He's moaning a lot as opposed to letting his football do the talking. But that's, again, is a combination of all the other stuff. But one of the biggest things I think is people have realised, if you get about him, don't let him have time and, and space on the ball, make him make him uncomfortable. He doesn't lose his head, but he gets close to it. He's not a Romero, who I think, oh, shit, you need to be careful here because he's going to get sent off, but he's close to it. That coupled with the fact that he's coming back from that long-term injury, isn't finding that form. We have been worked out a bit more. He's having to pick the ball up in way too many different areas. We don't have the back protection. He's thinking to myself, bloody, as he's part of this leadership team, is this too much? Is it a bit too much for him? Because he thinks he has to do more than he has to do. One way around this for me, play a double pivot. If you play Hoybier in a double pivot, Hoybier has a natural tendency, and it was probably one of the things that we didn't really like about him when he was with um when Conte was here, because he was already playing the back three, is he would then drop into to make a back six at times. You know, when we had a back five, but Hoybier does that now and he'll drop into the back three because his his natural game seems to be a little bit more defensive. But saying that, when he has come on, he's been one of my most potent players in terms of carrying the ball forward. So he's got that ability about him. So I think he can do both. But what having him and Bentacore maybe playing a double pivot would allow Madison to stay higher and not have to pick the ball up in his own half so much. Because that's what he's having to do. Play, find, he's having to find space because players are giving him no space. I want to see him operate behind that front line, but I want to see him get into the box more often than get into our box. Just on this Kulu thing, I wouldn't play Kulu for the next game. Um, I, I probably agree. would still play Madison, if I'm honest with you, but I would change the midfield three to Bentacore and Hoybier. Any thoughts on that, Sean? Um, yeah, I, well, I mean, Bentacore is is still a, a much a work in progress as well. I, mean, I think he's... He's had a bit of a stop start season as well. Um I I think what what has happened is we've become a bit too passive. And we're not we're not we're not doing the vertical passes that we were doing earlier in the season. Um and uh you know I, I, I think it's more to do with uh how we're playing rather than necessarily personnel. That's 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 causing a bit of a problem. I am a wee bit concerned about Hoybier for his lack of pace. And remember, Arsenal have got pace to burn up from, don't know, um, Martinelli and others. But I'm sure that, uh, you know, he, he, would, he would certainly do a job. And I think he, he, he obviously has, he has something, a point to prove. Sure, can I just ask this quick question? Because I'm not uh, finished, but it's just, it's just to add to the context of it. And I'm comparing us to Arsenal because I think we play a very similar attacking and aggressive style as Arsenal, even sometimes with the inverted fullbacks. Blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to put to the point they brought in Jorginho into their team playing that number six role. And I think he's done really well. I don't think he's any better or any quicker, more athletic than someone like Hoybier. And he seems to be the point which they need because they've got a Declan Rice who was playing the lone six, but now has the opportunity to play eight six because Jorginho is holding that space. Do you not think the similar side thing could be the case for Hoybe? doesn't have to use his pace necessarily, but has the ability to just play that role? He, he could possibly, yeah, possibly. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, you know, um, sometimes you have to be in the stadium to see, to appreciate Hoybe. Uh, that's, you know, I certainly found that in the past. <laughs> yeah. um, he, he, you know, he, he doesn't um, show up in highlight reels on TV. But um, I'm just I'm hoping that the uh, you know the players are you know are resting, are getting some rest because they they've had a bit of a stop-start season with the uh, the schedule. 
I mean, you know, again, this is another free weekend because Manchester City are in the, we would be due to be playing Man City this weekend. And uh, they, they got themselves into a cup semi final. Um, yeah, I, I mean, but a double pivot? Hmm, I don't, I don't see Ange playing a double pivot, but. On you know, paper, I, when I say double pivot, I mean mm. as a as you know how they show at the start of the game, this yeah. is where the players are. We never play like that. That's only on paper. But what I'm saying is you if, if you're gonna go into a defensive shape, I think Hoybier and Bentoncourt to me strikes me as a better defensive partnership than Basuma and any of them three. Any of them, anyone's Basuma and Saar, Basuma and Benton. I, I just don't see Basuma now as that player who's got that defensive quality or even the the willingness to want to do that job as much as some of the others that I've already mentioned. But that's just what I've seen. He could prove me wrong and he could prove it wrong in the next game against Arsenal because he's probably going to start that game, I would imagine. I don't know. Um, does it, does it not put more pressure on Madison though? That's the 10. <sighs> Madison says he wants that pressure. He, he, he says mm. he wants this, he wants to be the man. I'm trying to get him to be the man in a position where I know he can be the man. He ain't going to be the man if he's collecting the ball outside our 18-yard box too often. He's just not. That's not where I want to see him pick the ball up. I don't really want to see him pick the ball up too wide in them wide areas because ultimately I want to see him in that zone where you're threading them balls in and behind because that's what we do. We have our inverted fullbacks to make them runs. And if you, again, I'm look, looking at Arsenal. They make so many runs where they pass it out to the wide player and then you've got like, you're inverted, whoever's on the inside, making that run towards the goal line and they play that diagonal ball. That seems to be what we do as well. So the person playing that diagonal ball for me has got to be decent on the ball. And most of the time for us, it's Odegaard. I want it to be Madison for us. I don't want it to be Timo Werner. I really don't because he's shit. I'm going to say it again, he's shit. So therefore you want your better players in the positions where they can affect the game more. Madison needs to be further up the pitch to affect the game more. If you give him more protection by having players at least who are going to want to do or better at doing that job than he is, so be it. Again, it goes back to, and I'm going to touch it now, the playing style, uncomfortable conversations part two. I, I, I don't want to be in the Champions League. Wrong. I'd love to be in the Champions League next season, but do I think we're going to win the Champions League next year? No, I don't. Do I think we've got more of a chance to win the Europa League next season? At this moment in time, yes, I do. For the development of this team, I want to see how Ange develops his style of play in Europe because it's been shown that this... A two-legged game. If you are playing a two-legged game against Real Madrid and you play the first leg away and you get a draw or you get a... Let's say you get a victory against Real Madrid in the first game, I would think you're going to try and hold on to that lead in the next game because you know that they're really good. So you might have. So sorry, you get a, you get a win at your place, and then you get, you go into to Real Madrid in the second game. I just don't think you could be so blasé to think you could just go and play Real Madrid at their own game in their own stadium and think you can win. City might try and do that, but they've got better players than us. I might think you'd have to change your game. You might have to be a little bit more defensive. You might have to be a little bit more counter um, counter offensive. Do you see Ange doing that? In this Champions League, the proof's been there from the Celtic days that he's not going to change his style of play. He said that so much that he's not going to change his style of play. He said so much in the pre-match press conferences that do we look at the opposition now? Again, taking that out of context a little bit, do we look at the opposition? No, he does. Of course he does. He must do. But he doesn't necessarily train around what they do as opposed to what we do, which is fine. But again, I think that only works if you've got the best players in the world, which City tend to do or get the better players. I want to see us compete. I don't want to see us get whapped, particularly in the knockout phases, if we were to get to the knockout phases. Teams in Europe are too clever. They're too clever. They're not, they will change how they play. Some teams will change how they play to get a result because it's a results business, particularly in two-legged affairs, one home, one away. How do you think it would be? What would be the contrasting differences if we were playing in the Champions League? And I'll start with you, Sid, to the Europa League. And do you want to be in either one? Do you prefer to be in the Champions League for the money? And do you think we could win the Champions League? What what what's what does next season look like for you from a, a European footballing perspective, given the style of play that we're doing now? Just going back to something you just said before, but I missed it. My my headphones sort of went off the blink. You said Werner was a hit. 
no. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I've used them words ever in my life that he's a hit. Okay, I'd like no, to I'm, hit him. He, he's just demonetized our, our stream. <laughs> <laughs> Those um, words have never come out of my mouth, Sid. You should know that by now. I know. Um, in terms of European football and Champions League, look, next season, Champions League is a different format. You're going to be playing 17 games <coughs> or whatever it is, home row, 18, 32 teams. So you're going to be playing whatever, 16 games, 17 games, home and away. So it's a league basis. And apparently... The top whatever qualify for the uh, round sixteen or whatever <laughs> or quarters, but there's going to be the teams towards the bottom that are going to go into like a, a knockout thing to get the final places into the knockout stages, right? And what they're planning now is the final game of the league is all going to be played at the same time on the same day, so that. There's no advantage for other teams. So can you imagine 17 games or 16 games being played on one night at the same time, eight o'clock kickoff? That's going to be insane. In terms of us, if if we get into the Champions League, because that fifth position is not going to happen because we're so far behind on the coefficient ratings because Bayern and Dortmund are in the semis. We're not getting fifth position. Simple. End of. Done. Yeah. Brilliant. Now we're going to have to fight for it to get fourth outright. And it's a shootout between us and Villa. However, we're not going to win the Champions League. We're not good enough to win the Champions League with this team, especially with the way Angie's going to be playing. Like you said, we can't go to Bernabeu and go like for like against Real Madrid. If you're protecting a lead or not protecting a lead, you can't do that. We'll probably Daniel Levy will be rubbing his hands because he's just going to be looking at how many games. Oh, we're going to play X amount of games. How much money am I going to make? Yes, loads of money. Harry Enfield, loads of money, loads of money, right? Forget that. Realistically, Europa League, again, that's going to change the format as well. But we've got a better chance of winning the Europa League than the Champions League. For God's sake, at the end of the day, Champions League is for champions of Europe, the teams, the champions of their respected leagues. If we end up fourth, how dare we get into that and try and beat the champions of whoever's won it, right? Whereas the Europa League, you've got a good chance. Yeah. Villa have shown that. West Ham have shown that. You know what I mean? So, let's go into the Europa League. And we all, all know his record. We all know his record in Europe. He plays how he is. He's not going to change the system. The only way it changes is, as we've discussed, get rid of the players that are not needed at the club. I mean, I'm talking the likes of Ndombele's. If it means you buy his final year out, then you buy it out. If you hit, take a hit, you take a hit. Get rid of your other players as well. You've got rid of Dyers and all them. Like, get rid of whatever. I, La Celso wants to leave now because he's not happy apparently and there's two teams. Gills had a bid in from Feyenoord, so there's another one. There's a lot of players. Give him the players that he wants that can play his system, can adapt to his system. And then if he wants to go and play the way he wants to play, then so be it. But at least he'll have the players that he wants, he can believe in. I'm not judging Postacoglu yet. He's made a, a few mistakes. I think he's made more mistakes than a lot of people are making out he has. Yes, he's naive at times. Yes, other managers have come to us, the sisters out, they've played the system. They've adapted to their system, whether it's at half time or whatever, after 20 minutes. Ange doesn't adapt to his system. It's the way it's his way or the highway. And it works, it doesn't work. And when it doesn't work, it's failed. Fulham, Newcastle, it's, it's been proven. End of season two is where we start judging him and how he plays and how his system's going to be. Up until then, yes, we've had a free hit this season. We've been spoiled because he's come in and he's done as good as he has. Although people will then look at stats and say, well, look at his compared to Conte. Same amount of points, same amount of this. Conceded the same amount of goals, blah, blah, blah. Big difference. Harry Kane was there last season. This time he hasn't. So we've got that many points without Harry Kane. Whatever, whatever. I want to ask you guys a question later on as well about the strikers, which I'll ask later on. But in terms of 
Europe, I think Europa League's better and Ange wants to change his system. He'll play the way he wants to play because that's his philosophy. That's the way he plays. So, okay. Well, I'm going to go on to Mr. Belushi or Mr. Ackroyd, whichever one he wants to be known as. <laughs> uh, your, <laughs> your thoughts on exactly what Sidney has got on. And whilst you're doing that, we shall add in. Here we go. The, hey. the positivity is in the house. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing, Pav? I'm all right. I've missed you guys. I feel like it's been ages. Missed How are you, you guys too. doing? Missed you too, love. Do you know what? Do you know what? <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's, girl, I miss you. Like the deserts miss the rain. <laughs> and uh, and we were everything but the girl. That's right. There you go. There you go. Anyway, so it shows um, we missed you. We missed you a lot. Um, we'll come back to you in a minute, Pav. Just I wanted to get uh, Mr. Ackroyd's comments. There you go. Off the floor's yours. Um, yeah, I think uh, this. Well, this squad and our stage of development. I think the Europa League might well be a better <laughs> place for us. Um, I think uh, we. Um, we need to um, think about the. This is a as a as Sid has said, something to be judged at the end of next season. You know, rather than going gung ho into oh everything is shit and oh I've said that word now. Um, everything is bad and we have to uh, we have to you know just rip it all up again. Do we want to rebuild or do we not want to rebuild? Because we want to rebuild. We're going to have painful days, right? And I think this squad, as it currently is, and of course, it's going to change in the summer. Contracts are up. You know, there's all sorts of things. I don't think we'll have the same squad next season. I'm hoping that there'll be tinkering done. There'll be improvements. There'll be surprises. Um, and hopefully we'll have uh, a key... The key one is, is what uh, Sid has already indicated. It's about, it's about um, a goal scorer at the top end of the field. But yeah, I, I, I'm all in for the Europa League, to be fair. Ah, I like that. And, and for the reasons that um, Jesus put up here, to qualify for Champions League was, used to be, is only the winners of each league's domestic teams. In a few years, it would be the top seven European Super League is eating domestic leagues, that's right. Because like now, if we were going to talk about Champions League to qualify, you can go down to fifth. Look at the disparity in the Premier League in terms of what first place might look like to what fifth place would look like in terms of points different. Now, it's quite, it's a bit closer this year because we're quite a bit closer. But in previous years, it's been a hell of a distance. Even last year's probably a hell of a distance. That doesn't seem right. The fifth place team in the Premier League. So if you go to the fifth place, and, and I think the Premier League is probably the strongest league in the world. If you just go to the fifth place in Spain, fifth place in Germany, even though they've done well in Europe this season to, to get that fifth, it's going to be the same teams that get to the, the final stage anyway. I think the heritage thing is real. But again, there was this other comment, which was it what I was looking for. Here we go. That's the juice comment I was looking for. Champions League for money for club, but will be a whipping boy for the better teams. Europa would be ideal to bend, build Angie's philosophy and to bed in the academy players like we did with Kane back then. And we got a chance of winning that actual trophy because I think from what I've understood, and I think Sid mentioned it before, there is no drop down from the Champions League for the people coming into the Europa anymore. I think you mentioned that as well, Sean, as well. It was, <laughs> it was Sean. I'll take that back from you, Sid. Weren't you Bluetooth, Sid? It was actually Mr. Belushi. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's going to be the case. For me, for next season, it's a, it's a building. We've got to build. We, we have to have another year of building, but we also have to be in with a chance of winning something. I don't think we've got a chance of winning the Champions League. If you ask me now, do I think we're going to win the Premier League next season? I don't think we can win the Premier League at this moment in time, even with the summer transfer. I think we've got at least two or three transfer winners to be really competitive. That's borne out with, with facts from other teams that have done the same thing. Everybody keeps saying, look what happened with the Klopp team. It took him two years. Look what happened with Arteta. It's taken him this amount of time. Even Pep Guardiola, when he first came into City, needed the whole year. So... Why are we expecting Ange to be challenging for the league this year? Well, he shouldn't be. But I think it's just that whole 
philosophy of seeing the shite football we saw last year to what we're seeing now and the 10 games that we had at the start of the season. That's what set everybody thinking, oh, we can do this. Oh, we can do this. We can be that team. It's going to take a lot more than that for me. Um, Pav, uncomfortable conversations, part one you missed. We talked about players who we didn't think should be starting or potentially who would be changed. Just talk quickly on that. In that starting eleven that we had at the weekend, um, I think it was obviously Porro, Van der Ven, Romero, Doji, uh, goalkeeper Vicario, Basuma, Benton, Core, Madison, the front three, Timo Werner, Son, and Johnson. Should they have all started, or would you make some other changes for this Arsenal game? Who's who's for the chopping block for you, Pav? I would make changes. I was just, oh, I was just, you should have seen my reaction to that Newcastle game. I'm not even joking. It was horrendous, it was. And I cannot sit there and say that there was a single person who had an outstanding performance. Just <coughs> right. And it's ridiculous, frankly. And it's one of those where you've got to sit back and you've got to think, right, wh where do we go next? And people are saying, people are calling out, you know, Werner's not good enough. Madison's not good enough. No one was good enough in that team that day, right? And I think Kulu didn't start, did he? He didn't start, no. did he? No, right. No. I think there's a debate there with him starting with should he start, should he come off the bench? And I think I think it would have been a different story had we had certain people starting. Basuma's not good enough said it before i'm gonna say it again love the guy but he's just not good enough Ooh, he's not good enough <laughs> i was i, mean, I was okay. i mean right I'm, okay I'm... listen right okay okay there's there's some d debate there right he he has his good games he has his bad games but we can't sit there and say that at this present time he's been having good games because he hasn't it's just true right so it's like where do we go from there because our defense was flipping shocking are uh, the fact that we had a lot of possession in that game and barely got any shots and anything and it was just like what are you doing what what are you doing and it's it's a question of where do we go next because i don't know because i feel like i'm just trying all these things and you know people are saying oh he's been found out he's been found out and stuff but where do we go next what would you do if you was Ange, in this situation, everybody's telling you, oh, you need to change your style of play to adapt it, not change it. Adapt it to certain teams or certain occasions, certain games, blah, blah, blah. What would you do? Would you, because uh, there's two schools of thought for me. One is trying to reinforce a philosophy within the club. And you can yeah. only do that by being repetitive. You can't then chop and change. You can't then say, I'm going to play attacking football one week and then say, oh, because I'm playing this team, I'm going to play really defensive football because the players are like, well, what, what, what is it, boss? What, what are you doing? Are you aggressive? Are you not aggressive? Are you attacking? Or are you not attacking? So I understand it. I'm not saying to tweak your whole philosophy, but tactically you can do things. And I've talked about it already. Single single player in a, in a six, double pivot. A player that can drop into a back a back two to make a three, then you don't have to have so many wide spaces if you're going to have your your, your fullbacks in, your, in the uh, midfield area. You're going to have to do something about the spaces wide. So maybe play back three sometimes or drop into a back three with the players that you've got Hoybier, and i've mentioned that before it's tweaking how you play not just saying i'm going to drop that philosophy and change it to this i'm not going to go from playing spurs way to playing crystal palace way Bray hodgson start i don't want Ange to do that and that wouldn't be good but i don't want him to be and even though this word that you said here what is it where is it to call Ange naive is disrespectful peter I think we can use the word naive because I think he's been naive in his substitutions at times. I, I, I don't think that's a that's a bad thing to say. It's whether you learn from that naivety to see if that continues. Is that a trend? If the trend is, I don't care what anybody says and I'm going to keep doing that and the results keep on being the same and I don't care what anybody says, I'm going to keep on doing this. There's going to be a breaking point. There's got to be a tipping point. So something's going to have to happen. Either he's going to be in a position where we're going to say, listen, we're going to just accept it, or we're going to say, hold on a minute, there's going to be rumblings. So just adapt in certain situations, more so with the players that come on. We can't do it with Emerson Royal. 
cannot do it with Ben Davis. You haven't got the pace to play Ben Davis as a centre back to replace what Van der Ven does. It doesn't work. It just can't. So you either have to have the best players in the world, or these players coach to the point where they can do everything that you tell them. And I don't think we're at either of those stages at this moment in time. That's where I think we are. So adaption is what I'm asking for, not to change everything completely. Well, it's true. Basuma ain't good enough. So you got somebody there agreeing with you on that one. It's true, That's though. The... He's, he's not. And I'm, it's, it's an honest thing as well. And you are spot on with what you've just said. And I was going to build on that as well. And I think there's a lot of people saying, you know, oh, like I said before, Andrew's been found out. You know, we need to completely switch everything up. And I think... If we do this whole thing of we're playing different teams, we need to completely switch it up with whatever team we're playing with. If we do that, like you said, there's no consistency there. Players are going to get confused. Players are going to be like, what the, f what, what the hell are we doing, right? Yeah, you're at school, but don't forget you're at school. Don't be swearing. <laughs> it's a... It's a... It's definitely a tactic thing, right? And it is. And... I think I don't agree with a lot of his tactics and I don't agree with some of the substitutions and decisions that he's been making. But as well as that, people need to calm down a bit and have patience because people are calling, calling Ange out saying, oh, you know, he needs to get out of the club and stuff. But what they don't realise is what Ange is doing is he's not a quick fix. He's not just there to, that's it, he's going to get on the roll and we're going to win a trophy straight away because reality is, mate, we ain't going to do that. We ain't got the squad. We ain't got the ability to do that. What he's doing is he's taking his time with it. He's rebuilding the club. And that's what exactly we need. This season, we weren't going to win, win a trophy. It's just a given fact, right? And I'm all here for it now that we're not going to make Champions League. I don't care. Because at this moment in time, I just don't think we deserve it, right? And I think he's doing his job and he's trying his best. And he's not doing it to make these silly little mistakes he's doing it to test the waters and things and i think that's what we need to do but going forward there has to be a plan because at the moment i don't see no plan guys you can all answer do you think we need a plan b or do you think we just need to as pav has mentioned and a few people have mentioned in the comments just need to tweak tactics accordingly sid then you sure plan b is not available mate he's too busy making films um <laughs> or music but yes we do we do need a plan b but then again sean said it at the beginning uh pep didn't have a plan b yesterday did he so you can be the best manager win titles and cups and everything but if you don't have a plan b then you're going to struggle and that completely proves it so can i just caveat that I, I would say it's in Pep's defence the year before he won the treble. So if I was no, in, no, no, I was. I told, I told you not to f off. I'll do what I want because I just won the treble. I'm all for a double treble here. I'm just saying that I, no, I can understand, can. but I'm just saying that's in Pep's defence because he yeah, might be watching. He might be watching. Of course, but to have a plan B, you need to have the players in place on the bench, and we just don't have them players on the bench. He might not necessarily need a plan B. I'm talking about Pep. But he's got plan A. But if that plan A is not working, he'll just go and bring the players on that he can change the games. Like for like players, we haven't got that. We haven't got any like for like players that can come and do a job. If your best player, your best man on the left is having a bad game against Newcastle, he did. He can't take him off because you haven't got anyone else to come and take him on. Son's having a bad game. You haven't got anyone up top to come and go take his place. Johnson's having a bad game on the right. You haven't got anyone. You know what I mean? So... That is the problem. He he will learn that. I don't know whether he done that at Celtic or not. Sean might be able to give us a little bit more info on that. But in Europe, he had the same plan. It didn't work. At Celtic, he had the same plan. It works, but it's in range, obviously, in Scottish, is completely different. But, as in, there's not that many teams. No, okay. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, but, don't to, I don't want Sean to come into this because he might not be, anyway. No, no, no. I mean, it's only nine teams and apart from Celtic and Rangers, really, there's not, you know what I mean? But here, it's a different league. It's, it's. Uh, you can say it's better. <coughs> there's more teams in there. There's more competition. You have to adapt. It's like going to a new job. If you're going somewhere else to one of your competitors, you have to adapt because it's a new ball game. 
you have to adapt. And if things are not working, then what can I try? If he hasn't got that, then there's a problem. And I'll bring that thing I was going to say to you about, and then you can carry on about this and then add this onto it. We've struggled all season for a striker. Son, we've said can't hold the ball up. Duh, 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 duh. Why would you let Valise go? He's a young player. He's he's got height, he's got strength, and he, he gives it hundred percent. But he kept Scarlet instead, and he's not playing Scarlet either. So answer that question for me, guys. We're struggling up top for a natural striker. We get rid of one young one who could have been potential, and then you bring another one back who's who's a loanee at every other club. Didn't get any time at Ipswich. We've brought him back. We're not using him either. So I don't know because I I don't know about you guys. I think bringing on a natural striker when you're struggling in games makes a big fucking difference. And if Son's not up to it against Newcastle. Uh, bringing a big unit like Valise might not have won us the game, but it gives you that different option, doesn't it? You've got a big unit up top that can hold the ball, that can challenge Burn and uh, Shaw. Change it. That's just me. Sure. I see some disrespect for the SPL. <laughs> yeah, I do want to say that. <laughs> I, I, I did that. There's no disrespect, Sean. I'm just saying there's only 11 teams no, there. I think he's meaning about this one here. This, this comment here from um, oh, our sorry. friend Jews. That was Jews. That was Jews. Oh, how dare you, Jews? But West Ham wouldn't beat Celtic because David Moyes is a Celtic fan. He would, be, he would throw the games. <laughs> <laughs> so stick that in your pipe and smoke it, Juicy. Anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, I would. Uh, <laughs> what would, what would <laughs> <laughs> My strikers bit as well, and the plan B. Yeah, the yeah, plan B and the strikers bit. Yeah, you have to remember, right? We've had five years of different squads playing different styles of football. We've not had. You know, we still got remnants of, you know, squads which go back to 2014, or we had. We lost our number one striker, and we chose not to replace him. That's right. Now, you can, you can, you can comment on the wisdom of that in retrospect. It probably wasn't the best thing to do, but we, um, we, we, we need a striker. We have a striker who around Christmas, hit a purple patch of form. You know, let's not have it any, any other way. Ten, 10 goals in 11 games, I think it was. Of course. And and it was, uh, you know, then he, got, he, he gets an injury. You know, that, that's that's unfortunate. When, when you, we, we, we've suffered from injuries at crucial times throughout this season. You know, that's, you know that, that can happen to any team. It happened to us a lot, unfortunately. But, you know, this is a team learning a new style of play. I think, from what I remember at Celtic, it was more about inculcating an attacking form of football before working on the defence. It was it, The second season, he tightened things up with the, in defence, and I think we will see that being addressed next season. We will see that being addressed next season. Um, whether that's new players or, you know, slightly slight tweaks to the system, we will see, we will see changes. Um, I can hardly recommend this book if you want to uh, read about um, Ange. Uh, it's, uh, it'll, it'll give you a better background as, as to his history. The man has been coaching for 25 years. He was coaching when he was 12 years old. He was coaching his school team. You know, that's how, how, how much he's uh, in, uh, involved in that. So I think uh, we, got, we, shouldn't, we shouldn't, you know, I think we, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's been a common theme. I've said it every week. It seems we um, we're neither too high or too low, and I think I'm looking forward to next season almost as much as this is like this is like the uh, starter dish. Next, 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 next year will be the uh, the it will be the main course. 
and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So uh, don't don't worry. It's uh, um, I, I, I'm quite optimistic about next season. Firstly, I'd like to find out from Ed who Uncle Monty is. It can only Monty. be one of us three because it can't be It's It's Monty. What's his name? It's um, what's his name? Isn't it? John with Monty. Nail and I. Who? No, no, no. It's Uncle Monty. Is from With Nail and I. Oh, is it With Nail and I? <laughs> <laughs> it was so he's calling me a predatory homosexual. <laughs> it, was lost, it was lost on me. That's why I was like, oh, oh so uh, anyway. Go I, anyway, who, who'd want to sit in a car like that? Is she auditioning for Top Gear now? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this is her lovely little motor. It's her pride and joy. Yeah, yeah leave it alone. <laughs> her dad bought that for her. Me. He loves her. Dear me. Yeah. Well, I don't do that for me. Cool teachers, eh? Yeah. <laughs> they got have a little racy little number. Oh, <laughs> oh are you talking about the car, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that on track. Suggesting that our our Pam is a racy chick. Where were the no. hell are we going with this conversation? Where are we going today? with this conversation? Where are we yes. going? Anyway. Sam, you need to ask Pam the same question. It's definitely conversations. I know that much, but bloody yeah. hell. I didn't think it was ask, getting there. Hell, dude. Ask Pam the same convo. <laughs> the same question. What's up, man? We're musicians. Plan, plan, plan B. So the plan B in the forwards. Uh, what did you say about the forwards, Sid? Sorry, just to remind me again. About Valise and Scarlet, isn't it? The fact that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, know, what, what, was, what was asking and when you was away, Pam? So firstly, do you think that we need... Does Ange need to employ... Or have a plan B, and then see that it just to add on to that. Or with regards to the forward lineup, why have we let Valise go? Why is he not playing Scarlett if we're going to persist with Son as a number nine? And we can clearly see that Son is limited in what he can do as a nine from a, a hold up perspective, flick on, yeah. blah blah blah, all the rest of it. He's obviously Where's got Jürgen numbers. Klopp's plan B. Where's Jurgen Klopp's plan B? He's got them young, he's got the 16 year olds. Where's, where's Carlo Ancelotti's plan B? He's got um, Luka Modric. Still plays in the same style. Did they win? <laughs> <laughs> well, they got, What's they going got, on in this? <laughs> you two. <laughs> They're going to win the, the Spanish League. You two are. They'll beat bloody... Barcelona this weekend. They'll finish them off as a team. Right, this is not Comedy Central. I'm going back off. This is bloody YouTube. It's not Comedy Central. Pav, come on. Let's get her back on the track with this. <laughs> right, okay. To answer your questions, right, I agree with what you're saying, Sid, and I think people are saying plan B, plan B. I think we need to make more use of the youngsters because eventually they're going to be the future, aren't they? So it's about giving them game time, and I feel like... There are people who are disregarding the youngsters, but how do we expect them to, you know, progress and, like, get to the next level if they're not given game time? You might you might give them, I don't know, the odd, like, 10 minutes or wait until extra time and put them on, but I just don't think that's enough. And I think Ange needs to definitely take a minute and think about how he can embed the youngsters in it and you were saying like you know like release and then scarlet as well because like they're there like come on like scarlet he came on didn't he the other the other week wasn't it i can't even remember when it was and he came on two minutes pretty, i think yeah like two minutes that's what i'm saying it's like two minutes like he needs more game time do you get me so i think he needs to think about it definitely a hundred percent and the answer to that question is a no. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, <laughs> that's what I was shaking my head. I was shaking my head at that question <laughs> that Luca's posed. Now, whether Luca's done that because he's an Arsenal fan, he just wants to see what we're going to say. He's like, oh, we watch that. No, I don't think we're going to get Champions League. And, the, and we're happy God, with it, Luca. We're happy with that. Yeah. And God's honest truth, Luca. If we didn't make Champions League, I would prefer us to be in fifth. Now, if we slip to sixth, that'd be a problem for me because of Man United. But I don't think we will. So fifth place for me, I'm comfortable with that, basically to have Europa League football next year. That will be a good test for where this team could progress to for the following year in the Champions League. But to Do go from what? now to Champions League for me, I think we're just right. in the... It's too Do much. you know that question? Do you think Spurs will get top four? It shouldn't be that. It should be, do the players think 
they can get top four. Can are they capable of getting top four? I think they are. I think Villa are. It's gonna. It's a shootout between Spurs and Villa. Listen, it's, it's got just we who have, wants it more. We we have to be. And someone made a good point because if we've played the obviously we've played all the teams this season. The only team that's done a double over us, I think, from memory, is Wolves. Wolves are the only yes. team that's done a double over us so far this year, this season. Chelsea have obviously got the opportunity to do that when we played them. Um, oh no, Newcastle didn't because we beat them. Newcastle no, didn't. so so uh, I think it's only Wolves from memory. Somebody else in the comments. So again, it shows you that we can beat every team on, on paper. That's what I was trying to get to. So the fact that we can see that we can play that means that the style of play can be any team. But Champions League is a different matter for me. Champions League is, comp- is a comp- what well, we've seen what, what Champions League is about. Um, but no Conference League for Spurs. SPO is a tad better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's Jesus having? He's, he's winding you up, Sean. Jesus winding you up here. He's having a laugh about SPL. <laughs> Ed M saying, When does he bury tactics? What a load of rubbish. Ed M saying, When does he bury tactics? Fans complain are complaining why Madison is dropping deep when he's drawing out the press to create an artificial transition front three are not good enough to exploit space. Ooh, I think you need some punctuations in there, Ed, next time, because that was hard to kind of understand. But I read it out. Are you an English teacher, Pav? I'm a teacher overall, so yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that? In that, in, in that paragraph there. That's a mouthful, isn't it? That, that, that no paragraph there. there. Hey, <laughs> hey too much. teacher, leave the kids alone. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying, I'm thinking now, what Ed's actually saying is, when does he vary his tactics? He doesn't. So fans are complaining, are complaining why Madison dropped it. He's asking lots of questions here. And blah, 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 going on about the artificial transition front three and not good enough to exploit the space. Everything what you said in there is, is true. But Madison, if in a different formation, might not need to drop as deep to get the ball because you've got more players who have got better ability to pick the ball up in them deeper areas, which is really what I'm trying to say. That's what I want. Madison further up the front where he's going to do more damage. We don't want Madison to be Pirlo. I don't need him to be a Pirlo at this moment in his career. I want him to be a number 10. As close to being a Jude Bellingham as possible. Scoring goals, creating all the rest of it. But Madison's his own player. He can do... (laughs) Jude Bellingham is not a number 10. I'm sorry. He's not a number 10. Anyway... We're anyway, we, we digress. We're going to have to have a put um, an uncomfortable conversations part three. But what I wanted to end with is with your details, Sean. You had a little bit of a list. So I think we should do that because there's so many other things we could talk about. We could talk about the investment. One of the things I want to talk about in uncomfortable conversations part three is the fact that if Ange doesn't succeed in winning something for us next year, is he in danger of going somewhere else? Now, because of the way he is philosophy wise and wants to be playing the same style. Manchester City could be asking for a manager in a couple of years' time. Would that be a good track? But that would be uncomfortable conversations. Part three, people. Sean, your little list of comments you wanted to address. We're going to have a look at them. On mute, mate. You're on mute at the present time. Mute. Right. I'm, I'm indebted to uh, a commenter on one of Alistair Gold's um, videos, his last video. Um, and uh, it's a little bit long, but I'll, I'll try and abbreviate as much as possible. So, um, just some thoughts, really a final thoughts, and I'll say no more after this. So here we are, 38 games last season, 118, lost 14, 60 points. This season, 118, lost 8, 60 points. 32 games only. Last season, 8, missed out on Europe altogether. This season, God willing, we will be in either the Champions League or the Europa League. I think it's the Europa League for me. Um, this is progress. We've heard, I've heard Angel, I've heard Levy out, and frankly, this, they're fed up of it all. And said at the start, there will be up and down days. 4 0 hurts. Talking to Newcastle, about Newcastle, as does Wolves. As does Brighton, as does Fulham. However, we don't have a God-given right to win every game. We have to be realistic, but we are heading in the right direction. And we have to take a deep breath and evaluate where we were and where we are. 
We are much better than we were. Can't be argued. And that Ange has to look at himself sometimes. Do you honestly think he doesn't? You'd be mad to think that, to be fair. Um, if, that, if, if he doesn't, then criticism is justified. But do you honestly think Daniel Levy won't question him too? Villa winning 2-0 was painful. That was another painful thing about the weekend. Other than the fact that they beat them lot down the road. And it's going to be a shootout, as Sid has indicated. My final thoughts then, before I come round to all of you. Based I on... hadn't finished. I hadn't finished. Oh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the pause. I thought that pause was because he'd done. No, sorry. I'm gonna he was say taking a more. breath. It was. He had a full stop. Capital letter, and he was taking. Yeah, a I, was try, I was trying to. I was trying to summarise here. So <laughs> we need to regroup, take a deep breath, and see how far we get this season. Let's evaluate things at the end of next season, and uh, then we'll get a full idea of the Ange Revolution. <laughs> Jesus, taking it absolute. <laughs> you saw what his comments were, Sean, didn't you? He said you, <laughs> you'd be assuring for Sir Winston Churchill. And <laughs> we'll fight them better on the beach. <laughs> Sorry, I don't share the, opti- the the mythological view of Sir Winston Churchill. To me, he was a racist git <laughs> who allowed funny. the Bengalis to starve to death during <laughs> the Second World War. So but that don't will- give me that one. But we, a, I do like I do like I'll take right. an Uncle Monty rather than bloody, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> bloody Winston Churchill. But I just like that we will fight on the beaches because that's that's the old with the cigar. In there. <laughs> that was funny. But I, I guess <laughs> if what you said about Winston Churchill as a person, there's a whole new a whole story behind that, which you quite rightly, but that we will Talking fight them on the beaches. <laughs> we will never surrender. Uncomfortable discussion oh, sixty seven. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Back to revision. <laughs> Final thoughts. Yeah. Um, what I want to see us do is fight. For the rest of this season, I want to see these players fight. We've got three games in a row. Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool. The first two, if we don't show any fight in them, there's no chance we're going to be able to go to Anfield and do anything, in my opinion. And oh, that... You've... Was you actually planning on going to Anfield in general? No, no, I, I, I wasn't going to go, but in, in <laughs> us as in a club, we may as well not bother going to Anfield if, if the first two games we don't show any fight spirit. Because I believe Chelsea are on the up a bit of an up now, although they're still a bit of a one-man team, but they are on the up. And all you need for Chelsea is to come... No, we're playing their ground. You know what it's like. Chelsea is Chelsea. Arsenal will be Arsenal. They're, they've had a bit of a kick in, but they've got two games before we play them. Wolves and then Chelsea. So I think they play they play Chelsea before we play. Yeah, they do because they've got midweek against Chelsea um, next Tuesday. I do believe it is. So they've got two games to play before we play our game against them. So I just want to show some fighting spirit. I, again, results will come and go, but I can't have the results from the weekend and not. If you're fighting as a team, you don't lose four nil. You, you just don't. You know, you lose four nil when you decide that we've had enough switched off and we did switch off you don't lose 4-0 if you fight I can, I can tell you that but we shall see that's my final thoughts Pav your final thoughts I think you're spot on and I think it's about us going into our last few games with a fight and not this whole thing of acting like as if we're giving up not kind of showing interest in a way because like you said the 4-0 win uh, against um obviously us Newcastle winning that if we had gone in and we had scored a few goals and you could see that we were fighting it would be like okay we tried we can't sit there and say that we tried because we didn't right and we need to see that and now we've got a two week break and we've got that break in between arsenal's not got that so we've got every opportunity to take that on board and really grow and really take on board whatever andrew's doing with them and also then going into that game prepared they need to go into that game prepared and definitely needs to 
look at how he's going forward as well and I think we just need to show that we're interested and that we are ready and hopefully ready for the next season ahead we need to be realistic as well I've said this already and you guys have said it as well don't want top four we don't deserve it right and I think now it's just the reality check of right what, what's next now and it's just going all of this path, path so just your story. if we win all our seven games we would deserve it because we would get top yeah, four. so it does depend on from this that's what I'm saying about this point onwards what have they got to show us to be able to say that they we can go if they won seven games in a row now we 100% deserve top four. At this moment in time, based on a Newcastle, I completely agree with you. Sorry. And that's, that the, thing that, 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 that's the thing. They need to show that they want it because at the moment, we can't see it. We can't see that they want it. They may be saying, oh, yeah, we want it. We want it, but show us because we've not seen it. We didn't see it in that Newcastle game. Do you know what I mean? So <clears throat> we've got Arsenal coming up. We've got Liverpool coming up. We've got City coming up. We've got these Chelsea. other games coming up. Well, show us that you really want it. Show us your passion. Right, show us your passion for playing for this club and that you actually want to do something and make a difference. That's all. Sid, final thoughts. The Yaz, Yaz, and the plastic population. The only way is up, baby, for Ange and Spurs now. Do you know what? Like it's, you said it, Pav, we've got seven games to go, the next three games. They, they need to now. Like Bellingham yesterday, did you see the passion? Did you see the after the game when he was going into the crowd and giving it yeah, and giving it that with a badge? He's only been there one season. That's what I want for my players, to go out there and give it 110%. There's a lot of these rumours, everyone's saying, oh, Spurs are switched off. Spurs are already planning for the holidays, blah, blah, blah. You've got seven games, man. You're playing Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, you've got Sheffield United, you've got Burnley, right? Give me the same passion that you're going to give at, against Arsenal when you play Sheffield United in the last game of the season at uh, Bramall Lane. Yeah? I'll be happy with that. Like Puff said, get beat 4-0, but get beat with dignity. Get beat by playing for the club, by playing for the fans. Not by downing tools, you know what I mean? I'll be happy with that. I'm not going to be happy with that. But at least you showed a bit of commitment. You showed a bit of passion that you give a damn about this club and you want, you're going to fight tooth and nail to get a result. Yes, it doesn't go your way sometimes. And I think someone put <coughs> in the comments section, we teams don't beat us comfortably. We give teams the opportunity to beat us because we make stupid, silly mistakes. You, you I, I, I ask anyone in this group in the comment section to show me a game where a team has comfortably beaten us on their own credit without us making a mistake. We've mis, mis, we've made mistakes in every single game we've lost. Yeah. So, you know, I, if we play a team that actually comfortably beats us, okay, hands up. But for the rest of the season now and starting against Arsenal. You know what? Just go out there. Passion, pride, power. Watch cool runnings, man. Show me some pride. Show me some passion. <laughs> and I'm just going to put that again as we just have to say, well said, Sid. That monologue, I like that one. You needed the true hat for that one as well. So to end this, we have to end it with Mr. Sean as he posed that last bit on, on here. So final thoughts, Mr. Tifosi. Um, yeah. You know, there's an ongoing discussion that we had about our football club. It will always return to uncomfortable uh, positions. Um, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking more at the sunny uplands than the uh, the, the, uh, the soaking wet uh, lowlands. So uh, yeah, let's let's um, let's go forward from here. Six games, six games left. Is it 32 games we play? Yeah, six games left. Yeah. Uh, and let's 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 hoover up as much um, as many points as we can, and where we where we end up, we end up. You know, it's it's you know, they, they say at the end of the season the team will never team will never lies, but we're we're one of the you know we're one of the six best teams in the in in, in the Premier League I'd say this year, 
and we, you know, but we have made mistakes. You know, three three of the goals last weekend were by by Son conceding possession uh, on the edge of their box. So, you know, we need to, you know we need to we need to address those sorts of things, and I'm sure they're they're they're, they're being told and drilled at Hotspur Way at the moment. Apart from when Angie's going off to have dinner with the 1984 UEFA Cup winning team, like he was yesterday, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's 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 not get too down, guys. It's it's not too high, it's not too low. We've we've had a good season. We've had a good season recovering from five years of mess. We are in a good position. We're in a better position than we would. I think a, a lot of the fans have seen the glint of the glory when we played the first 10 games of the season. I still refer back to that. And everybody was like, oh my God, this is it. And just come in, he hit the ground running. Yeah, he hit the ground running, but now we've got a little bit of mud to go through. It's just like a bloody racetrack. You know what I mean? It's, it's a it's an obstacle course. There's going to be things in here that you're not too, you have to get used to. And then when you're on your next lap, oh shit, I remember, it's like the Grand National in it. That's why it's two, two laps. All the horses get used to that. Foot. Oh my God, the ones that can't make it, they fall over. But if you get over it, Next time he should be, but he can still fall over. That's what it is. That's a nice analogy. I like that. The Grand National. Just to put you into the picture, Tottenham Hotspur, 32 games played, 60 points. Newcastle, 32 games played, 50 points. Manchester United, 32 games played, 50 points. Catches. West Ham United, 33 games played, 48 points. And Chelsea, 31 games played, 47 points. Mathematically, all those teams could catch us, but it's very unlikely that anybody of those six to nine from Newcastle down ball because 10 points is a massive difference at this stage of the season because we're unlikely to win the league and we're only 13 points off top. So let's put this into context. We are going to be fifth. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. That was good. It wasn't even that uncomfortable. I think it was actually quite comfortable conversations. Actually quite good. Thank you, Sid. Thank you, Tottenham Tifosi, Sean Hell, and Pav, SPVP in brackets. We can also thank Luca AFC, the Arsenal man. Jews Nuts, as always. Ed M, thank you. Peter Kekios, or Kekia, how do you say that? Peter Kagias. Kagias, would you say? Ah, forget it. Tell us next time. Um, and that's about it. That's good. Sid, when are we going to be up next in terms of preview shows? For the Arsenal next week sometime? Well, if anybody's been asleep throughout the whole stream and not been watching telly for the last couple of weeks, there's a little small game next week. There's this little small town from Woolwich coming to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. <laughs> so, <UFC>. yeah. <coughs> so, hopefully, we'll try and do something. And Dial uh, Square. Dial Square. Plumstead FC. Yeah. So The team, the team of many names. There you go. So we'll get everybody involved and let's make it a big, big preview show. I want everyone out because at the end of the day, it's the North London Derby and everyone has something to say. So make sure you join us. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, PRTV Spurs and Paxton Road TV, because that's the only way you will find out when we're going to be doing the preview show. You've been told, people. You've been told. So you've had everything on this show. You've had the Blues Brothers, you've had new headphones, and you've had a teacher in a new car as well. So you've had everything. And you've got me and me added as kit. <sighs> that's it. I think we're done now. I think that's about it, the people. Um, thank you all, one and all. I am going to now find that tune to take us out. And it's here, the music. It's the final countdown. Thanks, 2004. Twenty-four. Well, you got doing the wrong thing, bro. You no, got I've it. got it, bro. I've got it, man. It's the thanks you for twenty-three, twenty-four final. I was gonna put the. I was gonna do this, but I'm not. I'm gonna do this one. Bye. Oh,